Hey, all back for another episode. Just uh, same old going on, you know, a lot of sanding. Um, so let's uh, check out the progress and uh, see where we're at. No, you're not bringing home another piece of junk. <laughs> This is really the part I hate. I really gotta force myself to do this. But uh, anyway, you can see I got some guide coat on the fenders, got some guide coat on the firewall, but we got the deck lid and the hood pretty much done. So these sanded out real nice. Um, I got a little glazing putty on a few spots, just one on the hood, but there are several on the deck lid that it's, I don't know if it was hail damage or rock damage or what just little dings and you I really couldn't see them until i uh put that primer on there and started blocking it and then they they all showed up so i like using uh I like using this glazing putty or different brands of it i got this brand this time and uh just put it on a put it on a spreader and mush it on there so this truck dries, dries pretty quick but when we get all this uh, all this block sanded out, then we'll um, go back and sand that stuff. Another, I posted a little short video the other day. I had always wet sanded everything with 400. It's just the way I was taught to to do it years ago. And uh, and then there's a couple of uh, black cars we did that I would wet sand with 400, and then go back and wet sand again with 600. Um, but there was a guy, it's about a three-year-old video. He's got, I think it's called DIY, do it yourself, DIY Auto School, I think is his name. Um, but he's got several videos on YouTube and one of them was wet sanding versus dry sanding. So uh, he showed how to do it using a block and just using like 180, for your first sand and then uh, 320 for your second sand so I had only sanded half of the hood at that point I thought what the heck am I try it and uh, I, did, I really liked the way it worked better I mean it made more dust and more mess in here but I didn't have wet sanding dust all over me and then uh, it just it went faster and uh, I liked the way it liked the way it cut and the way it smoothed out and, and I know it got at least probably a third off my time. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the car that way. And uh, you know, to me, like I did, I did, I guess this side wet and this side dry. And uh, I did this with 400 wet and this with 320 dry. And I can't even tell the difference. I mean, it's, it just worked really good, so. Look up that guy's video, check it out. Um, and uh, I, I think I'm gonna go that way. All right, so the next thing I need to do is do these fenders. These are a little more, you know, that stuff was all flat. It wasn't bad. This stuff's got a lot of, a lot of curves and stuff in it. So I've got, you know, one of these round blocks. And I just got some different shaped blocks. Um, We'll do with that I, and I know they say never sand with just your fingers but sometimes you just hit spots that you just you gotta use or I gotta use my fingers and some sandpaper but when I do I never go in a straight line I, I go in like little tight circles and I've, I've done that for a long time and it's not any issues with it all right so uh I got a few projects to do this weekend for some uh, for some friends and family, so I am not going to be able to get back on this probably until Wednesday. So, uh, yeah, almost another week. So we'll get back out here and uh, get going on these fenders. Um, and I, could, I'm, I am still hoping in July we're shooting paint on this thing, so I'm just going to keep on it and uh, until we get it all done and see where we're at. So. All right, we'll check back in a bit. 
morning all so it's been uh, it's been well over a week since I worked on the Chevy out here <clears throat> I put a little video out several days ago about um, you know just some maintenance work I was doing on my shop truck um, we've been down and uh, took a little break and been down in Florida seeing our grandkids and um, then uh, the, the day I put that uh, video out about working on my on my van uh, <clears throat> I'd asked for prayer for my sister Julie um, a few times you know she she found out back in April she uh, she had some cancer and it was pretty serious so uh, things kind of took a turn for the worse and she she passed away a few days ago um, uh, appreciate everybody that prayed for her she's a, a wonderful Christian woman and uh, uh, army veteran she was a a welder and a uh, drove a truck driver in the army. Um, you know when she when she got out of the army back in the I guess back in the mid 70s she uh, decided to get into nursing and she spent the rest of her career as a nurse. Uh, really enjoyed working with uh, with the elderly and with um, uh, kids with disabilities. And then she just she just recently retired. He said, found out she had cancer in April and and passed away a few days ago. And our family gathered and uh, you know prayed with the, <clears throat> prayed with her and for her as she went home to the Lord. And uh, he said, if anyone could continue to pray for her family and for for us as we go through that grieving process and and uh, you know just get used to try to get accustomed to life without her being around. But, Said I, she's a good Christian woman, and, and uh, I know where she is right now. She's uh, she's with our Savior, and, and that's very comforting. So, <clears throat> but uh, anyway, we uh, we spent the last few days together, and uh, we're gonna get in, everybody's getting back to back to normal, the new normal, and uh, so I decided to do a little therapeutic car work today. I'm gonna come out here and do some sanding and. We'll, uh, we'll update this as, when I get done with this, and uh, we'll want to get a little farther with this and see what it looks like. So, all right, back in just a few. All right, so I've been sanding on this thing a while, and we're starting to get there. Um, so on the on the hood and the deck lid, I use this big long block, and, and I'm I think I'm pretty decent at doing the doing the flat stuff like that. But when it comes to this, I mean, there's just really no completely flat areas on this fender. This is curved. There's like a dip there. Then there's a corresponding dip there. I mean, you got a little bit of a flat section here, a little bit there. So I've been basically using shorter blocks on that. I use this one to kind of knock it down and then kind of use this one, you know, like go at an angle this way and then switch it and go at an angle this way and I can see some high spots in there and I can uh, ding a few of them down <clears throat> I can see some spots where I'm gonna need some glazing putty in there um, like right here I, I can see a spot but you just you really got to decide how perfect you want to get it because like this the bumper comes up to here you're not going to see any of that i'm going to get it as good as i can i'm just you know there's guys who can do this like perfect and that's i'm not one of them <laughs> i probably get a little better every time i do it but it's uh um, just doing the best i can with it the main thing i want to do on this is like where these trim holes were you can still see a little bit of them here's one here's one here's one so that may end up with a little bit of glazing putty in there but uh, it's coming along, so I started with uh, I started with 180 um, to knock it down, and then I've been using uh, some 320, and then like these edges here, that's going to be behind the headlight bezel. You know, I'll just take some 180 and scuff that up. I'm not really too worried about that. The inside of the fender lip that'll probably just get some 180. The inside of the hood edge back there that'll probably it's 180 but uh, uh you know it's 
it's coming along for for bad as these fenders were I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way they're turning out so <clears throat> I'm gonna try to get uh, get both of these done in the next several days and then get on the uh, firewall I want to get it all sanded down uh, I'd like to get some 2k primer on the roof I think and get it sanded down there's if you go way back a bunch of videos I shot this with epoxy primer just to basically um, it had surface rust on it so I sanded it down put some uh, rust inhibitor on there and then put that epoxy on there to keep it from rusting so I don't, I don't know you know maybe we'll long block it and see what it looks like and uh, if it's if it's pretty straight I may not have to shoot any 2k on it we'll just, we'll just kind of see what it looks like but uh, and, and somewhere in all of this, I want to get this dash paint. I want to paint this dash black before, <coughs> excuse me, before I paint this firewall uh, green. And uh, you know, then we'll be getting on to the rest of the car here. But it's uh, you know, it's coming along so. All right, I really just want to take a break from, from sanding for a few minutes, so I thought I'd uh, film a little bit there. But let's get back on it and uh, and uh, see how see how we can get her finished up. All right, we're definitely getting better. I've been kind of just working on this top section here. Um, you see the guide coat's pretty well disappearing. Now that <clears throat> a lot of people will tell you, and I agree with, avoid sanding with your fingers. Always use a block. But you know, when you got something this shape, there sometimes there are just some spots that no block is gonna reach. Like this, this little uptick curve here. I mean, I tried several different blocks and they're just not curving to get that. So like right in here in this little curve, I sanded that with my hand. You know, when you got a, a valley like this and that lip comes back up, I used my, uh, these my round block. To get in there on this part but then when you kind of get around this corner here it's like you just can't you can't get that block in there to do that so uh, I ended up doing that with my hand so uh, you know and then like this shape I still got to work on this shape but you're not gonna get anything in there to do that so uh, you know the, the main goal is when you look down the thing that it's straight and sanding with your hand can dig, dig finger grooves. I kind of scrub when I sand by hand when I have to, you know. I just kind of do it like this in a circle in that area. And that seems to avoid that. I wouldn't do the whole car like that. I wouldn't flat, you know, sand long flat panel with that. Use the block where you can, but sometimes it's unavoidable. All right, so. I'm gonna have to run down, I think, and get a probably get one or two cans of just aerosol 2K primer. I don't want to mix any up, but then you know, like there's gonna be some areas where I gotta might have to put some spot putty in and sand them off, and then when I sand them off, I like to shoot a little primer over that and then sand it again. So I, th I think I'm gonna need some of that. So. And uh, all right, so we're gonna. We're gonna keep on, we're getting there. All right, so I thought I'd show what we got here. I think we're just about done with this stage of sanding. So uh, this is the back of the fender. Here's where I did my weld repair way back when, you know, when we welded this piece onto this piece and I think that came out pretty good. Um, hold on a second, let me flip this back over, put you down for just a second. So it came out pretty good. We got a few high spots we got to deal with. I took a hammer and dial and kind of ding them down. And uh, then I got, you know, like down here, some pitting in that primer. We're going to do some glazing putty on that. And uh, it just, just needs some touch up. But for the most part, I think it, it came out pretty good. 
a little high spot here where this patch was in and you can see along that well there's a little low spot so i'll probably put a little glazing putty on that but uh, like i said for the most part I'm, I'm pretty happy with it all right so i need to take a run to the parts store and uh get a can of 2k primer just an aerosol can because he's um i probably you know just there's like a few spots on the flat where i went through a little bit sanding there's one there there's a tiny one there so i might fog some more 2k over that and and uh re-sand it a little bit touch up sand it a little bit once we uh once that glazing primer dries so uh or glazing putty okay so let's get that on there i'll run and get the uh primer and we'll call this one done for now and then we have to do it again i'm so happy <laughs> okay back with the interval all right so let me show you this one so this is where i end up with uh, glazing putty here a couple dots there quite a few little dots there those, those were mostly like pinholes in the in the body filler <clears throat> I went ahead and smooth some in there and then uh, just a little bit along there so not too bad um, started sanding on this fender and uh, I took uh, let's see I took this block the long one with the 180 and then I went down to this one and then I started uh, I did some with with this guy and uh, looking pretty good I mean I got a definite low spot here I think this is where if I remember right I welded this across here but I had to weld a little triangle patch in there if I remember back so that's where that is <clears throat> You know, probably about the same as the other fender. Um, I think this area came out a little bit better than that one did. But uh, yeah, still, you know, it's kind of weird on the when you're doing these trim holes. It's like you weld them, you grind them smooth, you put the filler on them, you grind it off, you put the filler on them again, and then you put the primer on it and sand it, and they still show up a little bit low. Kind of interesting. So put a little glazing putty on those. <clears throat> But uh, yeah, it's coming along. So I'm hoping to get, hoping to get this fender knocked out today. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe do, maybe sand on the firewall a little bit too. I don't know. So I got a, got a few days to work on it. All right, I think it's about time for a lunch break. So I'm gonna go eat something and then uh, get back on this thing. Right, so I got that fender sanded down. Came out pretty good, but I, you know, just up here especially, there's a lot of pinholes in that filler. Um, yeah, I don't know why. So anyway, we spot putting them up, um, and uh, we'll have to we'll have to sand those once it dries. I kind of started sanding those over here on the deck a little, little bit one there one there can't even feel that anymore one down there so i just take that 320 on a block that stuff sands off really easy and, and really nice so i'll just kind of do those as we go along and i think uh i think i might go ahead and hit this firewall work on this a little bit today so what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to do the whole thing with 180 and then just the parts that are going to be exposed so like you know the front of this down to this seam i'll hand sand that with some 320 there's no getting a block in there you know there's just too many steps and stuff so um, i'll do just that section with some 320 the rest of it i'll just do with some 180 and we'll uh we'll be fine with uh spraying that because so all that's going to be covered up once you actually actually paint the car so i'm going to do a couple things i think i'm going to work on that i might 
get the DA out, sand on that a little bit. Um, I need to start sanding on these things too. So, might get DA out, start knocking these down. I'm not gonna get real crazy with these things because there's so little of this you see when the car's all together, but uh, yeah, I'll be a, do, do a decent job on it, so. Okay, so uh, more sand and just what I was wanting to do. All right, I got the firewall sanded. I did the, did the front with some 320 and uh, like the sides and up along here where that's all gonna be covered up. I just took the 180 and just kind of knocked the guide coat off. I'm not too worried about that. Same with down below this body line. Um, let's go spray, spray some color down there. You're not going to see any of that. So I did that. Um, I think I already showed you that. Got my uh, blazing putty on that. Sanded a couple of these guys down. Um, and then I went ahead and started sanding on the dash. Filled in a little spot there. There were two screw holes there where we had a tachometer. So uh, I'm gonna get this dash sanded off. I'm not gonna strip it, just rough it up and uh, paint it with that black tractor paint. And I did some sanding over here. So pretty much done for today, I think. My arms are getting tired. Okay, so I think tomorrow um, we're gonna, gonna kind of gonna alternate. I wanna I'll keep it on this video too. I wanna get this. Knocked down. We got another one in the car here. We're going to have a lot of dust to get out of here before we paint. Yeah. Got this one. We'll get those knocked down. Might even shoot a little primer on those tomorrow. Uh, but uh, in the next several days I would like to get this dash painted I'm gonna have to push this out and blow all the dust out of it with that black paint I don't want to get any dust on anything and kind of uh, tape some things off and I, just, I think it's gonna be better to paint that first and then let it dry for several days and then before I paint the firewall um, I don't want any black over spray up on that, on that firewall little green over spray black on the back on the dash it's just spray can dash paint i think that'd be a little easier to fix hopefully that doesn't happen either okay so uh i'll pick this back up tomorrow all right so last night actually a few nights ago i loaded up i had a five gallon jug of used waste oil and I dumped the rest of the uh, old oil in from changing on my shop truck. I was gonna take the auto zone, had it in the back of my van, my little van, and uh, forgot about it. So last night I'm going around a corner coming home and I hear this clunk, whoop, 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 whoop. And I think, what's that? And it's like, oh no, that was that five gallon gallon of oil falling over. So, Here's what I've been doing today. It went all down there, all over the back of the third row seat. I mean, I've been scrubbing, degreaser, carpet cleaner, scrub, scrub, scrub with old towels, shop vac, and uh, I got most of it out, but it's stained it up really bad. So, and that is just. It was just the absolute pits. But, uh, and I was going to put this thing up for sale in about another month or so. I guess that's uh, going to reduce the price somewhat. But, that stuff happens, you know. So, anyway, when I wasn't destroying my daily driver, I was kind of thinking last night about where I want to go next with this. I know I talked about 
uh, maybe painting the dash and painting the firewall. But I think what I want to do is this side is ready to primer, except for this body line needs sanded along this door. Everything else is finished up. And I took a long block and was going over the top today. And you know, all this has is epoxy primer on it. I think it looks pretty good. So I'm, I think I'm gonna finish this body line. We're gonna sand on that. And then I'm gonna take that 2K primer and I'm gonna do the spray this whole side. I, well, I'm gonna finish sanding that roof. As long as it's good, we'll, we'll spray the roof. I'm gonna clean out this channel here. It's got goo in it. So we'll spray this whole quarter. We'll spray the trunk um, channel and we'll spray this back here. That'll give me all this, all that, that I can start sanding on and uh, get it down like I got the door, like I've got the uh, fenders and the, and the hood and the trunk lid. And the only thing left is going to be that one side. And uh, while I'm doing that, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and I sanded those other two. I'm gonna go ahead and sand these. So when I primer all that, I'm gonna primer these. So I don't know, maybe maybe by the end of next week or so, we'll be able to uh, shoot that primer on there. I got a few things going on during the week. Um, but yeah, that would be a big step to get all that primer at once and be working on that. And, and, uh, I think my buddy's getting close where he can, you know, do the fine tuning on the body work on this side for me. And then we'll be pretty darn close to painting this thing. All right, so that's uh, the plan for now. Subject to change as always. I seem to change my mind daily on how I'm gonna do it. But, um, all right, I'm going to get the stuff and we're going to work on this body line a little bit and uh, see how good we can get that. All right, so let's see what we got done here. I got this body line all sanded it down. See that came out nice and straight. Just like one little, oh, there it is. A little spot right there needs a little touch-up filler. Everything else is good. It's got a, a little pit right there. Where'd you go? Right there. There. We'll get that. All right, so we got that done. I went ahead and went in here, sanded this door jam down, got that nice and smooth. That's ready for some primer. Back of the door, got that. That's ready for some primer. Got the other two of these sanded down. Uh, filler sanded down on there. They're ready for some primer. So we're looking. Pretty sharp. I took a little bit of 400 and went through and just started hitting some of these, some of these little blazing putty spots, and that's you can't even feel that anymore. That's good. So we'll just kind of work on those gradually. So yeah, a couple hours of sand in there and uh, looking pretty good. So uh, I need to take the wing window and the windows back out of this and the door mechanisms. But uh, I'm gonna get that out and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish. I think we're gonna finish sanding that roof. Uh, I'm gonna put some 400 on that long board and just go over this whole thing. But I mean, I, I used the long, long board. Is that big one at? This one back here. This, this is the longest one I got. But I used that. So, ah. Get out of here. I used that and went over it, and I mean, you can't, you didn't see any low spots in it, so that roof was in really nice shape. So I, I don't even think I'm gonna need to put any 2K on there. I got like two or three, I think three coats of epoxy on there. I think we're just gonna sand it and uh, go with it. So like I said, the goal is go ahead and get this side. We're gonna primer this, we're gonna primer the roof. We're gonna primer those guys. We're gonna go all the way around here, this quarter, this channel, all the way around there. We're gonna primer all 
that basically everything but that side of the car uh, and then i can be working on that getting all that final sanded down and i'll hopefully get to keep my body in here on that other side i think i am going to go ahead and uh paint the underside once all that's done I'm going to paint the underside of the hood and paint the underside of the deck lid separate from the top. I kind of figured once I get the trunk channel painted, I'll paint the underside of the deck lid. I then I'm going to try, I think it's called wet on wet, where you just kind of rough the whole thing up with some 180. It's, um, and then you take epoxy primer, shoot it wet, and then shoot the paint right over the epoxy primer while it's you know, like do epoxy primer, wait, whatever, 20 minutes, whatever the drive time is, or flash time, and then shoot the paint right over it, because it's inside the trunk lid, you know, it's, who cares really, but I got enough paint to do the inside of it. And then the uh, underside of the hood I have primered, I'm just going to hit it, hand sand it all with some 180, and uh, shoot the underside of that hood before we shoot the top of it just kind of have those done and out of the way so I'm trying to do the parts that, that I can do that I'm comfortable doing myself um, so those and we'll get some paint on the firewall like we talked about earlier in the video all right so that's going to be it for this one um no work tomorrow I've got uh some things to do this week I have to uh, got to do tomorrow I'm not gonna be able to work on the car but probably uh, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday evening, we'll get some time in on it. I'm hoping to get a lot of this sand and done, and maybe, maybe Saturday, next Saturday, be shooting some primer on this thing. That'd be nice. But we'll see. You know, I'm uh, happy with the the pace as it's going. So anyway, let's uh, call this one quits. Uh, I'm going to go inside. We're going to uh, see what the Lord's got for us today. And uh, that'll be it for this one. And I'll catch you on the next one. Hey, y'all. So um, I talked earlier in the video uh, uh, about my uh, sister passing away this week. And, um, you know, what a, what a uh, uh, loss it is to us. And But... Um, what a celebration it is of her life as a as a the Christian woman she was that she knew the Lord so much and I'll tell you it's a it's a great comfort to the family when you know when your where your loved one is going and I'm, I know my sister Julie is is uh, is with the Lord right now and you know she's got a she's got a whole new body and and uh, you know no more sickness and no more pain and um, while while she was here she was a faithful servant. And uh, she was an, her faith was an inspiration to me and many people around her. And uh, like I said, she was a, she was an army veteran. Um, she was a nurse, and she she just loved uh, uh, taking care of the elderly and taking care of kids. Um, there is a um, uh, like a, a home for kids up in St. Louis that uh, it's for one with pretty bad disabilities and stuff. I can't think of the name of it now, but I know she just she loved to work there. She would. And she worked agencies, nursing agencies, so she'd work around different places, and she loved it when she would work there with the kids. So, uh, and she loved her Christian music. So I thought instead of doing a reading tonight, I thought uh, I'd just do a, do a quick song for her. Um, just pull an old hymn out and uh, one that uh, that I I like to do when um, when my wife and I when we sing funerals and stuff and. Uh, you know, this is a, a great one for, especially when you, you know when that where that loved one is going, and you know the the faith that they had. And uh, this song has always been a big comfort uh, to me. So I'd like to send this out to my sister Julie, and I'm pretty sure she can hear me. <laughs> there is coming a day when no heartache shall come. Clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore along that. Hand. 
happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. Thank you for indulging me on that. And, uh, you know, I know now's the time to to grieve for the loss of not having Julie here. But uh, I'll tell you what, I just, I'm so happy for her where she is at, that uh, um, she's with the Lord and with our family that's gone on before. And and, uh, and there, there's no doubt in my mind of where she's at. And uh, if you ever met her, she would make sure that you did not go away without hearing about the Lord, hearing about Jesus, hearing about salvation. And so I just, you know, I just want to encourage you to, uh, if you don't have a relationship uh, uh, with Christ, that, um, that you pray about that. Even if you don't know who you're praying to, just pray sincerely that it, God whoever you are up there just reveal yourself to me and 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 i believe he will you know um but uh anyway i don't i don't, don't want to ramble on too much my head's not real clear right now with everything that's going on so uh let's do a, a quick prayer and um and we'll call it for this one father i just thank you for uh um for my sister Julie and for for her faith, for her integrity, for her service to her country, um, for the love and dedication she showed her family, and uh, for putting putting your message out there that she made sure that she would, that she was a witness. And uh, I just asked for myself that I can I can be that kind of witness too. And uh, thank you for uh, the inspiration she was to me. And just pray for her children and grandchildren as she is not going to be around. That uh, that um, the Holy Spirit will just continue to guide them on the path that she consistently guided them on. And we ask this in the name of your precious son, Jesus. Amen. Okay, hit like, hit subscribe. Um, if Julie was here, she would tell you to listen to a program called The Bible Bus. Um, if you're in St. Louis area, it is 91.5 FM, six o'clock in the morning. No, yeah, six o'clock in the morning, six to 6.30. So uh, hit like, hit subscribe, make sure you tell your friends, and uh, we'll be back to do some more sanding, which I know everybody's just dying to see. All right, we'll talk to you later.